Washington correspondent. That, of course, is the one and only Major Garrett. Major, always good to see you. Uh, let's talk about the latest poll numbers. I know mm -hmm. you've seen them, and Donald Trump is ahead by a huge, huge margin ahead of the other candidates, despite all of these legal troubles. Mm -hmm. So what does this say to you? What does it tell us? So, Gail, good morning. Good morning to everyone. Look, horse race political journalism has its place. I ought to know. I've been a practitioner of it once or twice. But this is not the place for who's ahead and by how much. The case being brought against former President Trump asked the country to answer two very important questions, quite separate from who's ahead in the polls at any given moment. What are those two questions? How much do we value votes and the process by which we count and certify votes? That's number one. And number two, how much do we value the peaceful transfer of power? In his first inaugural address in 1981, in the very first paragraph, President Reagan called that nothing short of a miracle. And what the country will ask itself as this trial progresses is, how much do we value those voting processes and those legal rights and the certification thereof and the peaceful transfer of power? Because both were threatened and implicated by former President Trump's actions. That's what he's being charged with. That's what the country will have to face. Major, the for former president is never short of words, but what are we hearing from Trump's team about the new indictment? A kind of toss salad of legal theories. One of them is he was exercising First Amendment rights. You have every right to speak in this country. You don't have a right to defraud and de disenfranchise voters. That's what's being alleged. There was a defraud effort and there was a disenfranchisement effort about voters. There's also a theory that he was taking the advice of lawyers. Well, yes, you can take advice from lawyers, but you can't take it if you have a reasonable belief that that advice is wrong or leading you in a criminal direction. And as Bob Costa just pointed out, they want to change of venue. What's the jurisdictional relationship to the crime? Washington, D.C. Where did it occur? D.C. That jurisdiction is probably going to be upheld. And Major, as we heard Bob Costa reporting there, that fourth indictment now is looming in Fulton County. The prosecutor there saying her case is ready to go. How soon could that happen? And also, how is he handling the campaigning side of this with all of these legal battles? Well, one thing the former president's campaign says is he's a candidate and therefore can't be investigated or charged. There's no history of that in our country. Political fa figures are indicted and charged, and they have to deal with that. And he will have to deal with not only the cases now, but possibly a case in Georgia, which could come in a matter of weeks, if not this week, maybe next week, certainly the month of August. And there's a civil case this fall. All these cases are going to trial. That will drain resources. It will be a distraction. It will be a headline-grabbing element of his campaign. All of that will take time and effort away from campaigning for office. For the moment, Natalie, it has buttressed him politically. We don't know if it will for the long haul. You know, Major, we keep hearing that Donald Trump has the option today of going in through a side door or going underground. People are saying, well, we don't know if we'll actually see him today. He may take that option. What's your prediction on will we see the president when he enters or exits the courtroom, or will it all be done privately? Because he could have done this by Zoom. He could have appeared virtually. As Scott McFarlane has reported many times for us, several of those who have been brought before the bench and related to crimes or alleged crimes on January 6th have appeared virtually. The president wants to come in person. That is his right. And most of the high-profile defendants who ever come into that courtroom have taken this private entrance. And because of the security concerns around a former president, I'm very confident that's the way it's going to go. All right, Major, we'll be watching. Thank you very much. And, of course, CBS News will have live coverage of former President Trump's arraignment later this afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern.